because the Fed has been so focused on inflation as the risk, it's all, almost become dangerous, you know, that they, they haven't been looking in the right direction. And so I think uh, Austin Goolsby, who's a voting member of the Fed, this morning said, we're paying attention, we need to pay attention to real, the real Fed funds rate. And if you believe that uh, inflation is coming down and will drop below 3% and then even drop to zero, you'll, you'll see a, a real Fed funds rate that is going to force them into action. So I think, I think it's now clear they're going to ease. Uh, it's also clear more and more people are focusing on some of the falling prices out there and crypto among them, you know, and asking questions. What's going on out there? In a recent interview with Kathy Wood on ARK Invest, we delve into the future of current markets, exploring the tension between inflation and deflation, as well as the dynamics between the yen and the U.S. dollar. Kathy Wood breaks down the complexities of the market's current behavior, highlighting the yen's weakness against the dollar and the global shift from inflation to deflation. This discussion underscores the possibility of a major economic paradigm shift. At the time of the interview, Bitcoin is trading around $55,000, showing a 2% drop in the last 24 hours and a 16% decline over the past week, with 19 million Bitcoins in circulation. Before we continue with the rest of the video, do check out daily 5-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. When you look even further back, you can see this yen carry trade extends back into 2011. Uh, the yen has been cut in half since then. Now, it, it did go through a period where it stabilized, but even if you were doing the carry trade and it was just stable, that was okay. The, now, it has just gone against. We've gone from 162 on the yen to 142 in, uh, in a week. Uh, and uh, I know this seems upside down. That, that means the dollar has gone down versus the yen. The yen has gone up. So all of those uh, speculators and others betting that the yen would continue to at least be stable or, or, or go down, they are probably being hit by margin calls. And we're trying to figure out who they are, where, because it does seem much bigger than just crypto, right? right? I think it is much bigger than crypto. Yeah, one other thing. On that, the assumption, as I mentioned earlier, is that the the carry trade involved, you know, sh uh, shorting yen or borrowing yen and buying uh, government bonds. Uh, mm -hmm. That does not seem to be what has happened. Um, or if it is, what we're seeing now, the, there's been a flight to safety into bonds. They have not been selling off as you might expect if they were the other side of the carry trade, unless this uh, flight to safety is overwhelming that. But it does seem that this hypothesis, and Nick, you were the one who surfaced it. I know that I had been saying this MAG-6 trade uh, uh, it is, is very unusual that it would be only these six stocks driving the market forward. But it kind of makes sense in the context now of this carry trade. Interesting. Uh, the day or a couple of days before the Fed made its decision, the former um, president of the New York Fed, Bill Dudley, came out and said, OK, when the facts change, uh, I change my mind and I'm changing my mind. I think they should ease tomorrow or uh, in this next move. And I thought to myself, wow, what does he see out there? Um, so they didn't do it. And, and we've gotten two very weak reports, the purchasing managers index and the employment. If you look through the employment, it was a very weak report. And I have a feeling that the Fed, if, if the markets don't settle down, uh, is going to have an emergency meeting, uh, before the September meeting. Um, you have Jeremy Siegel, a very well-known professor from Wharton, who's uh, calling for immediately, you know, 75 to 100 basis points. 
I think what this is saying is more and more people are beginning to understand that the risk is not inflation. It is deflation. It is falling prices. As we just heard, Kathy would passionately discuss Bitcoin's potential and its role within the global economic landscape. Now, let's delve deeper into the inflation versus deflation debate and how it impacts currency markets. Wood expands on current market trends, focusing on the unprecedented monetary policies implemented by central banks around the world. This discussion highlights the possibility of a deflationary environment and its implications for both traditional and digital assets. Next, let's listen to Kathy Wood's insights on the role of innovation in shaping our economic future. Yes, so good deflation is associated uh, with innovation, technologically enabled innovation. Uh, so we've centered our research from the beginning on uh, learning curves uh, and, and we try and measure the, the rate at which the costs associated with each technology fall. So our world is used to deflation, we expect it. But most of the rest of the world is not used to deflation. They haven't seen it for any long period of time. And so you get companies that have uh, relied on for their profits on raising prices, and now they can't do that anymore. So good deflation is associated with technology. Bad deflation is, um, is, uh, uh, is a function of companies um, uh, just raising prices and, uh, and basically the consumer saying no, and they're being forced now to cut prices when their cost structures don't allow for it. They do not have falling cost structures. Uh, and so that's bad for those companies. Bad deflation is also associated with an overwhelming amount of debt. You know, uh, it's, you know, where, you have too much debt and you just need to sell at whatever price to service the debt. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's, that's a bad deflation as well. Uh, bad deflation. The third one is, you know, the Fed not recognizing that it's too tight and that uh, monetary policy is causing a generalized decline in the price level. You haven't heard people talk about this or, or like this, but I think you're going to hear a lot more about it. Wall of worry is a, a stock market term. So, yes, you build a wall of worry and that that helps um, a, a, a bull market. You know, you don't want everyone believing that it's straight up and to the right and there's no risk. You want a lot of angst out there. I think the, the, the bull market has been unhealthy in that it's been so concentrated. We've been saying for some time that, um, that, that a, a really strong bull market would broaden up and broaden out and benefit many more stocks. And, uh, if we're right, and interest rates are, are going to come down and we're, we're not facing something we just don't understand. You know what I mean? It's that this is just a, a carry trade that should, uh, should disappear and that other companies now, uh, and stocks should be rewarded as interest rates come down. That could be a, that could be a, a fantastic bull market. What would happen is you'd get the mag six, maybe marking time, maybe benefiting, but not nearly as much as all of the companies that have been neglected over these last three years. It's interesting in this earnings season, analysts have been looking, okay, these are the AI beneficiaries. So they think, and that's, and they are, but they were expecting accelerated revenue growth, they didn't get it. They didn't get it from anyone. Uh, and so that was a first source of disappointment is like, wait a minute, uh, you know, these companies are spending so much on NVIDIA's GPUs and, you know, okay, that there must be someone benefiting dramatically, revenue growth accelerating, and it didn't happen. And now possibly you would have job cutbacks uh, impacting any seat-based uh, uh, company in terms of uh, uh, models. So I agree.
Wood provides a unique perspective on the future of money and global market dynamics. As we wrap up, consider these two thought-provoking questions. How might a shift to deflation affect your investment strategy? And what role do you believe cryptocurrencies will play in the future global economy? For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.